Hi everyone, Tina Tomisi here, Psych Nurse Practitioner, where on the street I make it okay to not be okay. Um, today I'm here to do part three of my divorce recovery journey and a year post divorce. I can't even believe a year is here already <laughs> and never would I have ever imagined being a divorcee. But it is, it is, it is, it is. It took me a long time to get to the acceptance stage and start healing from the pain, the anger, um, the betrayal, um, being discarded off. Um, because for us many women, divorce is never a choice a lot of times, but sometimes it's necessary to bring alignment, to bring some type of consensus, to, um, to even heal, to restart, um, to get closure for yourself, closure for yourself, to give yourself grace, to forgive yourself, to bring order, to bring order, um, because it gives you a blueprint um, for navigating parenting schedules, to navigating maybe even finances a lot of times too, to see who's doing this, who's doing that. Uh, because a lot of times, especially in the church community, before we get married, the nitty gritty of like duties, raising kids, a, a home, um, like chores, things like that, finances heavily, how to deal with in laws and outlaws, friends, all of these things, we don't really go go into the depth of it and making sure that there's alignment. And for me though, the grace that I give myself is that we started off being very, you know, young. We were very super early in our 20s. We both came into it with a lot of our own traumas, our own pain um, that we never touched on or being in the space we were be at that time. We really didn't have any blueprint, nothing to fall on, especially when it comes to trauma, when it comes to how trauma affects each other in relationships, how bringing your baggage from childhood to his baggage in childhood and blending that together, and how sometimes the alignment doesn't really align over time, how friendship is so necessary, having friendship in it. You don't have to be best friends, but that French that call friendship has to be so important. Um, that shared mutual goal is so important and having individual lives too is so important. But when that discourse starts to happen and forgiveness and all that stuff start to kind of meander or fester in there and without support, safe, effective support from both sides, takes two to tango, right? And it's absent or continue to be absent, then sometimes it's necessary. And these are things sometimes we don't talk about in our communities, church communities, communities of color sometimes, is uh, we talk about grief a lot. Let's say we lost a child, we lost a parent, we lost a sibling, we lost a friendship, a close friend, um, through just separation or through um a person going to be with the Lord. We talk about it. People reach out because they notice maybe somebody posts something or someone to say something or send a postcard or whatever because they've had a loss. So they go through that grieving process. That's not really a lot of shame associated with that. If you don't know anything, you get more of empathy and support from people when you go through such change or transition or grief or loss and you go through that same emotional grief sadness the anxiety um the irritability the anger um the lack of sense sometimes it's the shock the beginning shock of what is happening and not accepting it initially and sometimes it takes all of us different times to say you have accepted it the change and then you're healing from it um, but with divorce, though, the grief that comes with it, like when you go through a separation, a divorce, when you go through um, a breakup from a partner, there's a lot of shame and guilt associated with for the person and for other people. There's a lot of judgment. There's a lot of people who might leave your life or change course or 
maybe even feel like something wrong with you, even, especially as females. Like, hey, there may be something wrong with you. That's why that happens. And all the time, it's not at the core of it. When you start asking yourself, should I stay? Should I go? At the core of it, there is an unhealed wound and a healed trauma, childhood wounds, trauma from both ends. And if both people are not willing to deal and to start processing and start healing and start reconciliation and being mindful and intentional and, and willing to do the work to keep relationally things smoothly going. A lot of times it's for the sake of the kiddos to get that relational part going. Then it's sometimes super impossible. And I know I'm talking about this with a lot of courage, but I know I'm not the only one, the only woman who might have been thrown into this space where you really have to be faced with it, where you're like, reality hits you hard. Are you like, you're right? like, oh, how do I catch myself? How do I catch myself and catch my kids? How do I recover and continue to recover? How do I thrive instead of being in survival mode constantly? How do I deal? How do I co-parent? Co-parent. Sometimes it's absent. Sometimes parallel parenting. Sometimes you are the one reaching out to make sure that communication is still going on with your kiddos. Because sometimes they're the person based on what's happening or how, what happened or who they have in their ear. Sometimes that can even be a strain. That can even be absent. That can even be meager or can even be sparse. Can even be a situation where that person just pops up when they feel like it. And you have to be strong enough as a woman when you're going through this process to hold yourself, to be willing to sit on the therapist's chair, to do the work, to accept, radically accept it and start healing. It took me a long time. Like I said, this has been a year, a year to this day. And when I tell you, I've been through a lot in my 40 years. I was like 40 and beautiful, beautifully broken and continue to do the work of recovering from being broken. Um, so it's been a journey, but one of the things that I always hone in and that I've discovered that's been helpful in this journey of healing is giving myself grace for the fact that we met when we were young, very young. We didn't know enough about our traumas. We might not have the best support on the background from the beginning, the first five years. We might not have the best or we needed more support. We were not even aware of that. And, um, the other thing that I also hone in is a grace that I was able to go through those 40 years. Um, the grace and um, the gratitude for my kiddos to having that experience, to have grown for it, from it. And to know that I wouldn't even have this platform. I wouldn't even have been where I am right now if not for that whole process. If, if there are so many things that I've learned from that whole 14 years together, positively so. And I look at my kids and the reflection of them with both of us, and I'm grateful and continue to be very, very grateful for that. The strength, the resilience, the skill, the awareness that this has brought to me, the close knit friendships and sisterhood and brotherhood even that this has brought me, the support system. Because sometimes when this happens, it can just kind of get you at your knees where it's hard for you to even trust people around you but there are people who still stick around there are people that have that push back from because i just don't know it's hard to trust you're just trying to resume trusting people again because when you've had that happen you're like if that happened to me and you were left like that who can i trust now but you know god reminds me the universe reminds me that I'm lovable and I tell this to myself all the time as an affirmation. And I know if you're listening to me or check out this video, you yourself or somebody in, in your circle might have been thinking about should I stay or should I go? Might have been go gone through a breakup, might have been going through a separation or and or a divorce and going through it. You're going through your life in adulting, and having to go through the emotion, the destabilization that this can happen to not just you, the family, but the kids as well, to like pick up the pieces and keep it together. It's you know, um, like, you just got to be aware of these things. Do the background work. It's to know that 
some days it's not okay to be okay and give yourself that grace and to find gratitude and to find that safe circle that I'm talking about, friendships to support and all. People who will be there even when you feel unlovable. And I was going back to that. I tell myself, I'm lovable. I am a lovable. I'm a, Gina, you're lovable. Gina, you are um, a loving person. And, you know, everybody might have different views of, let's say, me or you, uh, based on what maybe what they've heard or the judgment they have about me or about you if you're checking out this video. But tell yourself all the time, you're lovable and you're loving. See, you're lovable and you're loving because those kind of occurrences, life be life, you know, things happen, we don't have control over it. But when I say those things can make it or make you or break you, it can't. Because the pain can be real. And sometimes it can be lifelong. This is why this journey, this work of finding support, a safe community, a safe support system, really honing in on your prayer, on your meditation, on your therapy, and having that toolbox. Sometimes it might mean you might need to be on something for anxiety to help you to navigate, to help your GABA, your dopamine, your endorphins. You might need to go to the gym more often. You might need to go hiking, going for a walk. You might need to self-soothe. You might need to reparent yourself, which can mean detaching yourself from feelings. Observe your feelings coming on, but not personalizing that might mean you have to hone in on setting boundaries and maintaining your boundaries because it's necessary for you for your sanity so boundaries are for you but not for the other people around you so time-wise engagement what you are open to and not doing give yourself grace to if you can't you can and it's okay and if you have people who really love you you're loving, but you're lovable, um, is that those people will understand because your people are safe people around. They're not going to judge you and be like, oh, what's wrong with you? You're too much. Why is it taking you so long to recover? Oh, my God, you're still grieving. It's been a year. It's been two years. It's been three years. It's been five years. Will Smith's ex-wife, they were married for, if I can remember, what is it? I think a year or three years. It was pretty short. But it's taking her over 30 years to still doing the work. She still talks about it to this day. Check her out on Instagram, by the way. She's so amazing. She's a powerful woman of God. And I learned from women who have gone ahead of me. And I, I know I'm doing this video with a lot of courage. But I know it can bless somebody out there. And I just wanted to kind of do a, a thing to just... Talk about it, because the more you talk about it, you not know, hide it, and you not know, feel shame about it. Brittany Brown talked about shame and guilt, <laughs> and how that can impact our sense of self, our self-worth, and doing the work to break out of shame or guilt, no matter what you, part you, or phase you are in your journey, so, so, so necessary. So observing those thoughts, and not really personalizing, detaching from the thoughts, and knowing that you're worthy, and your worth doesn't come from a person, but comes from the inner, your inner, yourself. That's why it's necessary to sit on that therapist's chest, chair, to connect with a higher power, to pray, to meditate, to do the self-soothing work that will center you and keep you centered. So this is so, so important. So if you're out there, you're going through a difficult time, you're going through a separation, a breakup, a divorce, I send you so much love because this is not for the faint of heart. I've worked inpatient. I've seen patients, clients who are inpatient, losing their minds, literally, because they went through a breakup. So don't take things for granted because it just, it hurts in the core of the heart. So if you know someone, send them love. And I am sending you so much love and you are not alone. You are not alone. You're going to rebuild yourself. You're going to recover. You're going to rebuild loving. You're going to rebuild dating. You're going to rebuild yourself. Your children will be okay. I'm sending you love. I'm sending you the fact that you are never alone. And don't feel that you're ever alone and take the shame out of it. And keep yourself centered with all this stuff and keep yourself out of the rumination, the anxiety, the judgment you have, 
those self-limiting beliefs you have within yourself. Being single again doesn't mean there's something wrong with you. There's nothing wrong with you. But once you center yourself and start to do the work, guess what? You're going to re-attract the person you are to yourself. But you have to be that person first. Who do you want to date or be with? The divine partner in the next phase. It will be determined by who you are now. What the work that you're willing to do for yourself and how you choose to show up then you attract that person to you. Give yourself so much great grace and I'm sending you so much love. Until then, if you can whip it in your mind, you can whip it in your recovery journey. So look out for help, for therapy, for coaching. Look out for my book, my courses coming out soon. I'll keep you posted on this street, on this internet street. And there's so much work to do. And until then, thank you. Share a like. Give me a like. Bye.